you know, uh, that, that list of priorities you mentioned um, aligns with um, the, the major design concepts that your office is, um, has been putting out. Um, the first one came out in January, um, and as you mentioned, um, was focused on optimizing inform the information environment for cloud. Um, can you tell us what that means and um, what you're doing specifically to get after this objective? Sure. So the first thing I have to do is define the information environment. Uh, when we when we talk about the information environment, we're talking about it in the context that DoD talks about it. So that uh, the the short answer is the information environment is actually everything. It is it is our infrastructure in garrison, uh, but it's also our infrastructure when we're deployed. It's our infrastructure aboard ships, uh, at expeditionary advanced bases. Uh, it, it is computers and networks, it's operational technology, it's national security systems. The information environment is everything. Uh, the next thing that I think I probably have to do is define cloud, because unfortunately, uh, the term cloud has been misunderstood. Uh, it, it's, it's a broadly misunderstood term, even though it's been well defined and it's old. So the definition we're hewing to is the one that NIST provided in 2012. And it describes five fundamental aspects of cloud, right? Five fundamental attributes that define what cloud means, right? Things like being able to determine how much of a service you're consuming at any given time, or being able to uh, rapidly provision it yourself. That is cloud, right? Mm -hmm. So, so uh, when we talk about cloud, sometimes we use modifiers. Uh, public cloud being the cloud we buy from others, right? Uh, private cloud being the cloud we provide ourselves, hybrid cloud being the mix of the two, right? And multi-cloud being uh, any capability that demands multiple uh, different public and private service cloud offerings. Um, and then, uh, you know, with those understandings in mind, uh, it, it, you know, as far as how do we actually optimize for cloud, we've broken that out into several objectives. The first thing uh, that, that we talk about, uh, and it's not a long document, if you haven't you know, gone and read it, uh, it, anyone in your audience, I would strongly recommend just pull it up on Google. It's called uh, Optimize the Information Environment for Cloud. It's a major design concept published by Don CIO. Uh, and it, it talks about you know, sort of three broad objectives within that. Uh, the one of them that I would stress here uh, is, is uh, diversifying transport. So our relationship with cloud has been somewhat weird as a Department of Defense. Um, you know, we uh, think of the network as the thing that we're trying to protect. And we think of the boundaries of the network uh, as where our defenses live. And that's not uh, a modality of thinking that can carry on indefinitely into the future. As we, as we move toward adopting zero trust, uh, implementing zero trust across the enterprise, uh, what that's going to drive us to is more data-centric thinking, right? Uh, zero trust is a data-centric security model. So uh, that means by extension that our bespoke DOD infrastructure, our bespoke Doden doesn't need to be the network that we're using mm -hmm. to access cloud services, right? We should be able to use networks of convenience. We should be able to use public networks, untrusted networks, to go and find and, and grab the services that we need, uh, uh, actually implement those services, uh, provision them ourselves uh, rapidly and deprovision them when they're no longer needed. Uh, you know, what we've done before is we've sort of built castles. And I think what we're trying to do now is more hide in the noise, right? Uh, the, the, the further we go forward, the more we're going to look like everything else you might see, right? Any other traffic that exists in that environment. And it won't be you know, uh, possible for uh, adversaries and competitors to distinguish uh, our presence from anything else. That's, mm -hmm. that's kind of where we're headed. So I, I, that's a lot of answer. I, 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 I wanna make sure I'm getting at your question. Yeah, no, I think you are. Um, I'm cu curious about the the piece you mentioned about um, uh, using uh, networks of convenience. Um, you know, how far off is is the Navy from you know the, that reality? And and maybe you touched on this a little bit, but what are some of the the obstacles um, you know in the way of that? Sure, um, I don't think it's far off. Uh, we have done some experiments 
um, that show that it's it's uh, it's imminently possible to uh, take networks that we don't own and use them to access services that we do control. Um, so the Navy's flank speed environment um, is uh, an Azure tenant inside uh, Azure sort of mill cloud environment. And um, that's where our data uh, on Nippernet broadly lives. It's also how we defend Nippernet. The tools that we uh, that we use to defend the, the Navy's extension of the Doden live in that environment and work very well. Um, we also access those services from untrusted networks today. More often than not, uh, I am actually accessing flank speed from a personally owned device in my home, not using a VPN, not connecting to the Doden, but connecting to the services that I need. So that is in production, in operations for 500,000 people today. The part that is probably further off is the closer we get to the tactical edge, uh, you know, the, the more challenging it is uh, to make broad scale changes to systems and networks, right? Um, their, their designs tend to be uh, more static and somewhat more brittle. And so, you know, we have to apply a, a thoughtful approach to how we begin to use networks of convenience uh, to do increasingly uh, difficult and increasingly important things the closer we get to the forward edge.